just share some things with you here. Uh, we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 through 4. We'll read those verses, and then I'll explain to you where this came from. You don't have to go very far to uh, figure out probably where this came from, but I will explain it to you and where this thought process is here tonight. And I think we'll study a subject that will be very interesting and very helpful. It goes a little bit along with what our teenagers looked, like, looked at tonight when it comes to wisdom and understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O Jerusalem, or O earth, excuse me, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is, I want you to notice this, this is the song of Moses. He is the rock. His work is perfect. Notice that rock should be capitalized there in your Bible. It says his work is perfect. I love that. I, I, I have to think about, I try to think about the word perfect, and I don't have to go very far looking at myself to realize that I'm not perfect. But Jesus is, God is, he is the rock. He is, his work is perfect for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Where I want to focus here tonight is on the subject of a God of truth. A God of truth. I want you to think about truth tonight. I think about our works, and we looked there just for a moment at the word perfect also, and how I realize that I am not perfect. I, I go back many times and look at the work that I've done around the church or around the house or even some of the work that I've done on my cars or something like that. And I, I look and I say, boy, I didn't do that very well. Uh, I know my father-in-law was the kind of guy that if he was out trimming the shrubs, uh, he literally, and my wife remembers this, uh, he literally would be outside trimming the shrubs and he would have a level. And he went back, he trimmed the shrubs, and he'd make sure he trimmed it level. If he didn't, he'd trim it again. And uh, I think about that, that's, that's pretty good, that's pretty precise, but not me. I usually trim it, and I look, go back, and I say, yeah, it looks level to me. And then when I drive by the next time, I realize if I'm driving from a little different angle, I say, oh, man, that ain't straight. <laughs> that ain't more close. It looks straight when I was standing up there, but it does it, Try to set the trailer. I set the trailer down and said, man, that looks straight. As soon as I go back one way, it looks, doesn't look straight that way. I look over here, it doesn't look straight that way. I look where I was standing the first time, and it's straight. See, it's straight. It's level. It looks good, but not from a different angle. So uh, you have to sometimes uh, kind of line it up. But I will tell you this, our Lord is perfect. He is perfect, and he is full of truth. Last night, I watched two gentlemen. Well, no, I shouldn't say gentlemen. I watched two grown men. argue back and forth about what seemed to be nothing and after I got done watching that I felt dumber than I did when I first started <laughs> I know that's not a nice word but that's how I felt I'm like I don't think I know as much as I did when I first started watching this thing now now I'm even more confused you know why I'm even more confused because of all the lies and our world right now is filled, our news media is filled with lies. No matter what side you're on on this whole thing, it's filled with lies. You fact check this thing and you fact check that thing and you find out that neither one of them are telling you the full truth. Because there's parts of these things that are true and there's parts of this that's true and there's parts of that that's true. My, my wife said something tonight and, and the kids all said they were going to go find another church because... She kind of she says she feels like she's part man right now because she has a boy growing inside of her, you know? So, whoa, something's weird, you know? Chuck Connors, or Chuck uh, Norris said that, too. He, he said he, he was, he was a, a man trapped, or a woman, a man, man trapped in a woman's body. And uh, he said, and then I was born. So that's what Chuck Norris said. But anyways, we think about the confusion that's going on today. And then you watch this play person, or you watch this newscast, or that newscast, and this guy won, and you watch this, and that guy won, and I don't know. I never saw any points being tallied anyway, so I'm not sure. At the end of the day, I don't know who had the most touchdowns. I mean, they didn't throw any footballs around. They didn't even shoot any baskets. I, so I don't know who really won the debate. 
I promise you this, who should have won the debate, it should have been the Lord. The Lord should be the focus of our lives. And the Lord should be the focus of even our country. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're to be under God. And I'll tell you what, the more I watched that last night, the worse I felt, the sicker to my stomach I got, and the more I realized that we live in a day and age of lies, and we need to get back to the truth. And I'm not talking political, I'm talking religious, I'm talking spiritually. We need to get back to the truth, and I, it just it, it hit me like a ton of bricks after the, I watched that silly thing. Why well, I wasted an hour and a half, or an hour and 36 minutes of my life at that point in time. I tell you, it dawned on me that we need to get our eyes in the right place because it does not matter what happens on November 3rd. What matters is who is truth. And tonight I want you to know that God is truth. Jesus Christ, the Lord is truth. And we are going to focus on truth tonight. How does that sound? Something completely different than the news media. Something completely different than Facebook and, and YouTube. We're going to focus on the truth. The truth tonight is the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, our God, our Savior, He is truth. And we're just going to travel through the Word of God and learn a little bit about truth. Turn to Psalm 25 here tonight. A little bit about truth. First of all, the Lord is truth. In Psalm 25, I may ask some of you to help me a little bit tonight. So I want you to be on your toes. I know you're tired, but I promise you, if you're with me, we'll get through this. And we'll get, we'll get you out of here at a decent time, 11, 12 o'clock tonight, something like that. You can get to bed. And uh, we'll make sure that you get home and you can enjoy a, a little bit of your evening tonight. I don't know what you'll do. I hope you're not going to look on politics but because there ain't nothing good there. And there's not a whole lot of truth there. And it all depends on who you're talking to, what you want to find, what you want to know. But the reality is here that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is truth. And I like truth. I want to know the truth. The truth is... Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we'll look at that verse here in a little bit. Verse 4 of Psalm 25. We could read a lot of verses. And I know I sound like maybe sound like I'm contradicting myself because I don't want to take one verse out of context. But I don't believe we're going to, by, by jumping to different chapters tonight, we're not looking at just one verse and only uh, taking it out of context. I don't believe we're taking it out of context at all tonight. Notice verse 4. It says, Shew me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Hey, listen, if we're, I, and I understand we all should be voting. There's no question about that. Go out and vote. There was one thing I agreed with Joe Biden on last night. It was go out and vote. Because we have, we, we have that privilege to be able to go out and cast our vote and make the decision. And listen, if we cast our vote, then we, with a clear conscience, and we, we can say, hey, I cast my vote. And you know, if it doesn't turn out the way I want it, it, it is what it is. But I at least cast my vote. And it, what bothers me is many people, they won't cast a vote, and then they still complain. Right. We didn't even cast a vote. Well, my vote doesn't really count anyways. <laughs> this year, maybe it won't. Who knows? It might be found in a creek. It might be found in a river. It might be found in a trash can. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. At least you can walk out of there and say, I know I voted. What they do with my vote, I don't know that I can control that, but I voted. And I made sure that I went in there and did what the best that I could do and with the most understanding and through prayer and all those kind of things. But notice the Bible says, teach me thy paths. In verse 5, lead me in thy truth. I don't know that we saw a candidate last night. I guarantee you probably don't want to follow either one of them, to be quite honest with you. Because they're both going to lead you down the wrong path more than likely. But I'll tell you one who will lead you in the right path. His name is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And I want you to know tonight, Jesus and the Word of God says here, lead me in thy truth and teach me. Young people, we learned about wisdom and understanding. You need to seek those things. For thou art the God of my salvation. We talked tonight a little bit in our youth group about how wisdom and understanding will lead us to life. Eternal life. I hope you have eternal life tonight. I hope you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior because He is truth. You're not going to get your salvation out of a newspaper, folks. 
You're not going to get your salvation. I don't even know if anybody reads the newspaper anymore. You're not going to get your salvation off of Facebook today, folks, unless it's the gospel plan of salvation through Jesus Christ and Him alone. You're not going to get it there if you're looking in politics. The Republican Party is not going to post and more than likely, a, uh, a, a way, the way of, for salvation. And the Democratic Party is not going to post on their website the way of salvation. But in the house of God, you can hear it. In the Word of God, you can see it. You can learn it. You can understand it. And you can receive it tonight. The way of truth. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. The Lord is truth. Psalm 31, verse 5. The Bible says in Psalm 31, verse 5, Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of what? Truth. Hey, how much honestly? How much, how, is there anybody here last night, for last night, here tonight, that would like to bank your life on what was said last night? And you may say there was a few things that I heard and I know the facts on that and that's true and there were a few things that I heard and I know the facts on that and that's not true. Some of the other stuff you may be a little bit farther fetched on, you don't know. I didn't research it. I don't know. All those kind of things. But I will tell you the truth tonight. God is truth. He's truth. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, first of all, I can look in the Word of God and find it. Second of all, I... I know he's in my heart and I can I know he's alive and he's real and he wants me to do what's right and he wants me to know the truth so that I can be set free in Psalm 33 the Bible says in verse 4 for the word of the Lord is what right, right. think about some of the things that were said last night was that right I don't know let's get the facts and let's fact check listen the word of the Lord is right and all, not some of his works, not most of his works, all of his works are done in truth. He didn't lie his way to get something accomplished. He didn't lie his way into the White House. He didn't lie his way into Congress. He didn't lie his way into the Senate. He didn't lie his way into the chair for a judge. Listen, Jesus Christ is truth. The word of God is truth. The word of the Lord is truth. I want you to notice in Psalm 119. Turn over there with me real quickly. I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir tonight. I know that. But I want you to understand tonight. Hey, listen, I don't know what you got your head focused on right now. I don't know what you're trying to get your brain wrapped around right now. But I'm telling you right now in the house of God, what we need to see right now is that God is truth. You want to know what's true? You want to know if your friend really said that about you? You want to know if somebody was rude to you or mean to you or said a nasty comment about you? Listen, I want to encourage you not to worry about those things, but worry about what's true in the Word of God and worry about more importantly than what is true, worry about who is true. God is true, and you get focused on Him, and it won't matter what everybody else says. It won't matter what everybody else thinks. I was listening to a friend of mine who's talking about it, and man, this hit me like a ton of bricks. I haven't even let my children watch this yet, but I need to. And he was, he was talking about how difficult it is. He's a professional musician, and he's talking about how difficult it is to play music, and not in front, not at Times Square, where there's a million people, not, uh, you know, uh, at a concert somewhere where there's 150,000 people. He said, the hardest place for me to play at is in my own church. And he said, it's because not only do I know the people, because at Times Square, there's no way I'm going to know all a million of those people. But in my church, I know them and they know me. See, it goes both ways. And really, to be quite honest with you, sometimes the most difficult times and the difficult place for even me as a pastor to preach sometimes can be in my very own pulpit. Because I know you know me. You know why? Because I can preach a message that's 100% straight from the Word of God, but I know that you know me and you know that I don't always live that. Because I'm human. My kids are sitting down here and they live with me 24-7. 
My wife knows me better than anybody else in this room, except for the Holy Spirit, I guess. But my wife knows me, and she knows sometimes what I preach, even though it's right, it's 100% truth, that I didn't always live that. Sometimes it can be difficult. And I want you to know the truth about our Lord and Savior is He is true. There's no lies. There's no deception. Psalm 119, hey, I, I think about, you know, you might get caught in the cookie jar, with your hand in the cookie jar, uh oh and you have to lie your way out of it with the chocolate all over your face, right? But not the Lord. He's filled with truth. Psalm 119, 142, the Bible says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law, this book, is the truth. It's the truth. Turn to John chapter 1. The Gospel of John chapter 1. Come on, I'm getting your work out tonight. Remember we said a few weeks ago we were trying to exercise our senses? Tonight I'm getting you to exercise your fingers and the pages in your Bible. I, you know what? Shame on us that the pages in our Bible are sticking together. And I'm not talking about from use. I'm talking about from lack of use. Our Bible should be used. And they ought to be, they ought to be good and well worn in, worn in, if you will. And I know you say, oh, I just bought a brand new one. Yeah, that was three years ago. It's still not broke in. Hey, let's get them broke in. Let's get them broke in. Notice 1 John chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and, uh, the, uh, the glory of, uh, as of the, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, and what? Jesus Christ is full of truth. John bare witness of Him and cried, saying, This was He of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For He was before me, and, and of His fullness... Have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and what came by Jesus Christ? Truth. truth. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We don't have time tonight to turn there. I was hoping to get a little further. I want to get through this lesson here. I think it's a, it's a good lesson, but uh, I don't want to beat a dead horse, because I think we all understand tonight that the Lord is truth. John chapter 14 and verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I quote that verse quite often. It's really... Probably my, one of my favorite verses, not my life's verse. Um, I, I, I claim quite a few. But anyways, I, I want you to think about the fact that the Lord is the truth, is the truth tonight. Number two, I want you to see that tr His truth will endure forever. Back to the book of Psalms, Psalms 100. I want you to notice in Psalms 100, His truth will endure forever. You know, President Trump is the guy who amazes me. I mean, with, with his age and his, as much energy as he still has. I mean, I after the first trip, you know, I, I would probably just have to take a, take a nap for a week or so. Um, but he's in a different, you know, state most of the time, every day, if not several states in one day. Um, and, and it amazes me with his health, that he, you know, with his age, that he can get around like that. And, uh, and that's, that's awesome. I think that's great. I hope that myself at that age, I can get around, move around like he does. And, and uh, I know Joe Biden's traveling around. And he's not a young guy either. Um, and maybe uh, from what we're hearing, he's not doing quite as well, but uh, getting around those type of things. But the same fact, they're still both getting around and moving around. But I want you to notice that they're not going to last forever. Their thoughts aren't going to last forever. Their doctrines, their beliefs, their whatever you want to call it, ain't going to last forever. Their presidencies aren't going to last forever. And hopefully, you know, in that sense, we, you know, it's not going to last forever. It's only going to be a, a four-year term or an eight years, eight years, uh, twice, you know, two four-year terms. And notice the Bible says in verse five of Psalm one hundred, "For the Lord is good; His mercy is everlasting, and His what truth endureth to all generations." You know what that tells me. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. You know what that means? His truth and truth never changes. You know what? Sometimes we think truth should change as the wind blows. Well, let's change what that says. Isn't it amazing how many... Anybody remember what it was like to be in, in high school and to see the, the amount of additions, new additions they've had to the, to the science books or to the math books? This is like the 12th edition how do you have, why do you have to have a 12th edition? Well, for some of the reasons, it's money. They just If they make another edition, then you have to buy it. We understand that. But sometimes they have to fix the problems that are in it the first time. So they have to make a new edition. 
Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ is truth and his truth will last forever? It doesn't change. I am the Lord. I change not, the Bible says. He doesn't change. His truth doesn't change. And real truth doesn't change. We don't have to go back one day and say, well, I thought that said that yesterday and today it says something different. No, it's truth. I'm the Lord, I change not. For the Lord, his truth endureth to all generations. That means for us, those after us, and those before us. Psalm 117, I want you to notice one more verse there on the point or the topic or the subject of his truth will endure. Psalm 117, notice verse 2. We could read verse 1, but for sake of time, we'll read just verse 2. It says, For his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth how long? Forever. And here we have, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, because his truth endures forever. What one person says today is factual and is truth. Tomorrow it changes. No, but what Jesus says and what God says is truth will last for eternity. Notice Psalm 91. This is a familiar psalm. Every time I turn to Psalm 91, I don't know why this is in my brain, but every one time I turn to Psalm 91, this is one of the last messages I remember Dan preaching about Psalm 91. And it just always comes to my mind, my thoughts, because this was a chapter that he loved. And he preached on this chapter several times, many times, when, since I, uh, we came to Southside and begin to work together. But verse 4 says this, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His what? His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. I want you to notice not only the Lord is truth, number two, the, the truth will, his truth will endure. And number three, his truth will shield us. Talking about fact checking today, right? Let's fact check that. Well, I can promise you, you can fact check God all you want. It's right here and it doesn't change. Now, evil, corrupt men have tried to change God's word. And you know, the majority of the time they do that, it's not because they're trying to get it better. It's because they're trying to make it meet their wants, wishes, or so-called needs. Let's change God's word. If I can change what God said, then I can make it fit my desires. His word changes not. Forever and ever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. I will worship towards thy holy temple, and I will praise thee for thy wonderful works. And listen, we need to look towards him because his truth is a shield to us. I will shield thee. That truth is something that we can live by. I want to know the truth. Tell me the truth. Well, right here it is. You want to tell somebody the truth? Tell them what God said. Tell them what God said. Hey, don't tell them what Sean Hannity said. Tell them what God said. Don't, don't, don't tell them what Tucker Carlson or somebody like that said. Tell them what God said. Because I can promise you what God says is truth. What they may say may be there. What's his name? Don Lemon, the guy from CNN. I don't have to go out and say anymore. Hey, listen. You want truth? Listen to God's truth. Tell them what God said. We're gonna have to burn it down. Tear the whole system down. Hey, listen to what God says because God's truth is a shield. Over us. I never said that. How many times have we heard that? I never said that. I didn't say we heard that last night. I didn't say that. Come on, Harris didn't say that. Kelly and Conway didn't say that. Well, you know what? I think if we dug deep enough, we might find that maybe they did. Because people say a lot of things, don't they? People could take the messages that I preach and say, look, Pastor said this. Take it out of context. Do, do, go ahead, go right ahead. Take it out of context and tell somebody that's what I said. I just told you tonight, my wife thinks she's a man. <laughs> Take it out of context. Why not? Because she has a baby boy living in her stomach. Her womb, I should say. I prefer to choose womb, I guess. But God's truth is a shield. When we do it God's way, it shields us and protects us. Let me give you the fourth point tonight. 
not only is his truth or will his truth shield us, but number four, we are to walk in truth. We are to walk in truth. This is a pretty good one. This is good here. When we think about this, how important it is that you and I walk in truth. We are not to spread lies. We are not to tell rumors. We are not to, that's not what we're here for. We're not here for gossip. We're not here for whining and complaining. We are here to spread the truth of the glorious gospel. And that's why we come to the house of God. That's why we learn uh, on a Bible study night to learn more about God's word so that we can share that truth with others. We are to walk in truth. Psalm 86 and verse 11 says this. Teach me thy what? Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. You know what every one of our heart's desires ought to be here tonight is to walk in the Lord's truth. Unite my fear or my heart to fear thy name. I will walk in thy truth. Every one of us need to be walking in his truth. Psalm 119 verse 30 says this. Psalm 119 verse 30. You want to turn there? You want to see it with your own? Uh, as Brother George says, God-given eyeballs. Look at me with your God-given eyeballs. Look at God's word, though, with your God-given eyeballs in verse 30. I have chosen the way of what? Truth. I choose truth. You know, I, I, you know I, I, on the party side, the political side, I've been on one side of it my whole life. And unless something crazy changes, I'm, I'm guessing I'll probably stay on that side. And the reason I stay on that side isn't because I grew up that way. The reason I stay on that side is because it lines up much closer to this book than the other side. And I, there's, I don't know how else to say it. When you're talking about issues about uh, abortion and issues about life and all those kind of things, you're talking about the real issues that matter, uh, lives, all lives. And listen, it's got to line up with this book because this book is truth and I need to live truth so not only do I want to live truth but in living truth I, I need to be able to vote truth I need to be able to vote towards towards what would be the closest lining up to to the word of God I know that's hard to do today because the candidates just don't seem like they always line up but I have chosen the way of truth are you walking in truth tonight? Are your children walking in truth? Thy judgments have I laid before me. How am I going to walk in truth? i got to know what God says to be able to walk in truth. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. John chapter 8. I want you to notice verse 32. John chapter 8. Turn there quickly if you would. Keep those Bibles going. I want you, I want you to exercise a little bit tonight. It'll help you so you won't fall asleep, okay? I don't want you to fall asleep on me. I mean, that, that happens enough. You know this verse, John 8, 32. Everybody say it together. And ye shall know the truth, truth and the truth. truth shall make you free. We are to walk in that truth. And when we know it, we are to continue to walk in what we know to be true. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Flip on down. We're, I'm making this easy on you. We're just going chronologically, at least the way it's written, uh, the way it's laid out for us. So we've got now 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to notice verse 10. As the what? As the truth of Christ is where? In me. Is the truth of Christ in you? If the truth of Christ is in you, then you need to walk in that truth. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of the king. What are, what's Paul, what's the apostle Paul boasting about? The truth of God's word. The truth of God himself. The truth of Jesus Christ. The Son of God. The Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. No man's going to stop me from sharing the truth. We'll look at that in just a little bit. No man's going to stop me from walking in truth. I want you to notice Ephesians. Just a few chapters, uh, books away there. Ephesians chapter 4. I'll tell you, if, if boy, I don't know. I just, I think this is good stuff, folks. I really do. It's from straight from God's word. And 
I think it's really going to help us in our lives if we would just learn to focus on truth. Stop focusing on all those things out there. Man, I've been car searching and everything else. I don't know if I've ever been so discouraged looking at stupid cars. Man, it's everything. And President Trump mentioned it last night about how expensive cars are. You know, people can't afford a car. You're right. I can't afford them. I have to keep fixing, just like the rest of you, I have to keep fixing the ones I got because I can't afford to buy a new one. And it isn't because I don't get a good salary. It's because they're crazily priced. But the truth of the matter is, is God has something specific and God has something special for every one of us. And he doesn't want us to focus on cars or vehicles or houses or even lands. He wants us to focus on truth. Ephesians 4 the Bible says in verse 25, it says, Wherefore, putting away lying, that is the opposite of truth, right? We understand that tonight. Put away lying, speak every man what? Truth. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. This goes along with our last point as well, and we'll look at that in just a minute. But we are to walk in truth. Our speech and our language and our conversation should be filled with truth. Shame on us when we picked up a barbell with 100 pounds on it and we told everybody it was 150. Shame on us when we ran three miles and we told everybody it was six. We ought to be speaking truth. I'm just, I'm just talking honest things at this point. We just need to be honest. We need to be honest. Shame on us when we ate eight pieces of pizza and we told everybody we ate four. <laughs> we don't want to think we were a pig. Shame on us for not sharing the truth. Shame on us when we tell them there's a 350 underneath that hood. Really, it's a four cylinder. It's like, boy, it don't sound like a 350. Hey, listen. We need to speak truth. Honesty and truth. And the truth shall make you free. We need to walk in that truth, folks. We are to put away lying. We are to put away those things and speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Shame on us. We were to go to the neighbor and tell the neighbor, hey, my son struck out 10 people tonight when the truth was he struck out 10 times. <laughs> hey, shame on us when we're not speaking the truth. And I know those seem like extreme examples, but there's probably not a person in here that bragged about their kid in some way, shape, or form, and it wasn't 100% true. There probably isn't a person here. That, what do kids do? My dad's tougher than your dad. Oh, yeah? My dad can eat more donuts than your dad. <laughs> oh, yeah? Let's put them to a contest. See how they feel after that. We were talking about that the other night. We were going to have some kind of eating contest, weren't we? And I was like, I'll, we were having a little Debbie eating contest. Did we have all those little Debbies left over? I said, and, and we, we bought them anyway, so I took them home, and, and now you can tell why. <laughs> Why I'm a little sluggish tonight, but I said, let's have a little Debbie eating contest. And Alden says, oh, Dad, no. I'm like, no, I didn't want one either. I was just kidding. Shame on us when we don't tell the truth. Hey, listen, we should remove lying from our lips. I want you to notice also in 3 John chapter 4, and this is something that we've talked about many, many times. I've preached about several times, and I'm obviously having my quiver full at this point. Um, I mean, we need to make sure that we're teaching and training our children. And here's what it brings when we learn to walk in truth. Notice verse 4 of 3 John. It says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Not only is the Lord truth, not only will his truth endure forever, not only is his truth a shield and will be a shield to us, but we are to walk in that truth. Are you walking in that truth tonight? Shame on us. You know, when we were kids, we used to call those people who like to blow stories up, we called them windy. He's windy. I don't know if we use that term anymore. I haven't used it in a few years because I try not to judge people, but the reality is what we meant by that was he wasn't telling the truth. He wasn't telling the truth. And the truth of the matter is, we should tell the truth. My son likes to tell a story that my grandfather, or my father, tells him. There was a gentleman that lived in Baldick, Ohio, and 
he was what we call, and this somebody's probably gonna think I'm racist, but what we call half-baked Amish. Means he was Amish, but he kind of turned away from the Amish, and you still knew he was a back had an Amish background, and that's kind of that's our so that's probably a racist term, I guess, but against the Amish. But uh, anyways, we call him half-baked Amish. But he was known for lying. He could tell the biggest lies, and he was good at it. And so one day, some guys came to him, and I probably won't tell the story, right? So hopefully I'm not lying. Hopefully I'm telling the story, right? At least the way my dad tells it. Some of the guys told him and said, hey, why don't you tell us a lie? And he said, no, I can't do it today. So oh, come on, tell us a lie. He said, well, I don't really have time to tell you a lie. I've got to get down to this guy's name was Har Har Diep Diepenbach. He said, i got to get to Har Diepenbach's house because... He passed away. Actually, that's not quite how the story goes. It was just how it goes. He said, I gotta get the heart deep in box box house because he died he died. And everybody's like, What? So these guys, they get they, they get in their cars and they go to Heart Deep and Box Box House and he's out plowing his field. <laughs> they come back to the guy that told the lie and they says, You lied to us. And he looked at him and he said, you asked for it. <laughs> Sometimes that's kind of the way people are in the world. Now that was supposedly just a joke, but the reality is, could you think about the lasting impacts that could be caused by somebody telling somebody that somebody else died? And the reality is, Jesus is filled with truth. You're not going to go to him and he's not going to lie to you. He's not going to tell you something that's not true. He's not going to tell you somebody died when they didn't did die. He's not going to tell you to go do something that you shouldn't do. And, and we are to walk in that truth. And to know that our children are walking, walking in truth should give us great joy. When we hear our children sharing the gospel with somebody else. We have our children inviting somebody to church. That's exciting. We have our children harassing us to give a hand out of track. To somebody. I won't tell you who that child of mine is that harasses me every time she goes with me. She's my middle daughter, but I won't tell you who it is. And she harasses, I told you that on Sunday. She just harasses the dad. Dad, did you give him a track? Hey, then I start to think and I say, that brings great joy to me to know that she cares enough about that person that I don't know and she doesn't know. But she wants to get them the truth of the gospel. And that speaks to my heart. Jesus is filled with truth and we need to walk in that truth. Lastly, I want you to notice number five, we are to share his truth. Not only are we to walk in his truth, but we are to share it. And yes, walking in truth will help, help you share it. But the truth of the matter is, is we still need to open up our mouths. And our conversation should be on truth. Psalm 40. Turn to Psalm 40. I love what David says here. David says in Psalm 40 and verse 10, you think about what he just says. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. Now, to some of us, you read that, you say, we're, we're reading this out of context. What does this mean? I've not hid. He's saying, I'm not keeping it in. I'm sharing it. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I've not just hid it there and stuck it there and never brought it back out. He says, I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. David says, I have not hid anything in my heart. I've given it out. Declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness. I haven't kept it to myself. How greedy and how selfish are many of us when we try to keep God's love and God's blessings to ourselves. We were at a church not long ago and there was a lady who... The church, uh, the, the refrigerator just died. It just, it quit. And this man was trying to, uh, trying to figure out what they were going to do. And they were struggling a little bit, trying to figure out how they were going to get a new refrigerator or get a refrigerator. And they were looking at used refrigerators and, and looking at people who were maybe going to uh, give them a refrigerator cheap or something like that. And there was a lady that called up and she says, I, went, I called the, uh, the store and there's a refrigerator, it's waiting for you, all you got to do is pick it up, and it is paid for, and it's brand new. Brand new. 
And she said, one stipulation. She told the man that, that did this, she said, she said uh, that she told, she said, I just don't want you to tell anybody what happened. And tell anybody that I bought that refrigerator for the church. And the man told her, and I love what he said, he said, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't keep God's blessings away from people. He said, so I will tell people. I just won't tell them it was from you. I'll just tell them there was a lady that gave this refrigerator to the church. And he went around telling us and telling everybody else that he came in contact with that somebody get, gave them, a, bought a brand new refrigerator for them for the church. And it was a seven or $800 refrigerator. She just paid for it. But he said, I just won't tell them who it was. But I'm not going to rob people of God's blessing. I'm not going to not tell people that God blessed our church. And that spoke to my heart thinking that, hey, we ought to be willing and excited about reaching out with the truth. And David says, I have not concealed thy loving kindness. I'm not going to conceal something like that. I'm going to share it and thy truth from the, like the great congregation. I am not going to stay, remain silent, but I'm not going to be the silent majority. I'm going to be the speaking crowd, if you will. I'm going to share God's truth and God's love with others. And we'll finish with 1 Timothy chapter 2. Turn there with me and we will close, I promise you. 1 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> say, Pastor, why do you say I promise you? You probably shouldn't promise. <laughs> I guess that's another one of those terms we get ourselves stuck into sometimes when we're preaching. I promise I won't be long. We should be filled with truth, though, really. And we shouldn't say things that we don't mean, but I want you to notice 1 Timothy chapter 2. I want you to notice verse 4. For sake of time, I would read the first seven verses, but I don't have time tonight. Verse 3 says, look at verse 3. It says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be what? Saved. You know what really should have gripped our hearts last night? Is those two gentlemen on that stage actually agree? They needed Jesus. They all three do. I, I don't know if any of them are really saved. I've heard testimonies from, supposedly from President Trump. I, I don't know. But... Um, only that between them and the Lord, but our desire for them ought to be that they would be saved. And to come unto the knowledge of the, what? The truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher, look at this, and an apostle. I speak, what? The truth in Christ. And lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. We are to share his truth. Folks, well, he's a preacher. Listen, every one of us are supposed to share the good news. We all have a responsibility and obligation to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you tonight, are you sharing that truth? Are you sharing his truth? First of all, in review, the Lord is truth. His truth will endure. His truth will shield us. We are to walk in His truth. And we are to share His truth tonight. You know what I titled this message? And I know I like, the, I like titles, but I entitled it The Truth About Truth. Because He is truth. The truth about truth. You want to know the truth? Seek the Lord. Seek His Word. That's where you'll find it. And the truth shall make you free. Father, we thank you for the time you've given us. Thank you for your truth. Thank you that we can trust you and rely upon you. Help us to focus on that truth. If there happened to be one here tonight that has not received your truth, your salvation, your gift of eternal life, 